if you thought I already burned enough packs on wooden slices, you were wrong. Here are some more. Hi everyone, I'm Anne and in the last episode I would burn some bugs on wooden slices. Initially I also burned this moth for that series, but this was the only piece where I added white accents with colored pencil, so it felt a bit out of place. That's why I swapped it for a wood louse to fit the previous series, and I decided to make the moth into its own series by adding two more moths with white accents. As I did with the bugs in my previous video, I started with burning the smallest details with a micro whiter pen tip. Then I switched to my small round shader for blocking in the bigger parts on the moth. I had a larger reference on my tablet to zoom in on the details and I also printed a version in the same size as the moth on my slice of wood. That way I can see better which details are too small to leave into my piece. I often burn in the darker areas first and work my way out from there. But here I realized that I blocked in the wrong section on the wing. This was meant to be the light stripe. Instead of immediately sending it all off, I left it bit alone for a moment and darkened the area around it a bit more. That way I had some time to think about how I would solve this. That's why I don't like too much sketching lines on the surface, because I get lost in the details and color in the wrong parts. Especially in such a small piece as this, but it's fine. When I blocked in the rest of that wing, I grabbed my engraving tool and sanded carefully a light layer of my mistake away with the diamond bit. That stripe is supposed to be still a little bit darker than the white vertical stripes on top, so I don't have to sand everything down fortunately. I'm happy I have this tool, because we all make mistakes sometimes. But you can also use some sandpaper or an exacto knife to scrape away a light layer. After that I refined the wing a bit by adding darker tones where it was necessary and by adding some texture. When you look closely, the moth is a bit hairy, not only on the body, but also on the wings. And of course I needed to do the same thing on the second wing, except trying to not make the same mistake again. Then fill in the body and touch up some other areas and it's time for the next moth. I'll share how I did the white accents at the end, when all the moths are burnt, so stay tuned for that. For the second moth, I also started with a micro writer at first, but there wasn't much to do with that pen tip, so I basically immediately switched over to the small round shader. With this one, I started with the body of the moth first. There is no particular order in which you should do that. The wings were just a matter of filling in the dark spots at first, but I kept the direction of the wings in mind. The strokes I make are more in an up and down kind of way and not from left to right. Even if you're not going for a realistic approach, it just looks weird if you make your strokes in a random direction. And sometimes I make a slight indication of some hairs on the wings, especially around the darker spots to make the edges a bit more jagged. They're not perfectly smooth. Sometimes I erase the pencil lines in an area where I have most of the details in place, just to see if it looks good or if I should keep working on it. Although you can't see it that well on camera, in real life erasing the pencil lines makes a huge difference. Thank you. 
and I burned in both of the wings. I went over the area that will be white and burn in a very light layer of shading. It's subtle, but it's there. That will make a huge difference in the end when I add the white accents. Just wait and see. But we're gonna burn the final moth first. When I look closely at the photo reference, I can see that this moth has a thin outline on all the spots. So that's the first thing I do here, outlining all these details, although normally realistic animals don't have outlines. After that I go in with the small round shader and start with the head. This moth has a very furry head. The dark patch on the neck is darker than the edges and in the middle, so I make sure I make my strokes in the direction of the fur and leave the areas lighter where I see a lighter patch of hair. Then I work on the wings. The dark spots on the upper wings are not as dark as the hairy neck and the spots on the lower wings, but darker than the area that's surrounding the spots on the lower wings. I have to turn a slice of wood regularly to finish this, so I hope you're not getting dizzy because I can't help it. On the photo reference, the center of the lower spots are much lighter than the edge. I believe most of that is because of the light reflection. But because there isn't a very defined light source, I'm gonna ignore that. I make the center a little bit lighter, but not as much as the photo shows. If you made it to this point in the video, I appreciate that. Let's play a game and comment the word moth down below or a butterfly emote. That way I know you're still watching and we can tease other people because they might not know what's going on. Then it was time for the body. The body and the lower wings are quite similar in value, so I try to add separation with some more shading. After that the only thing that was left to do was adding the white accents. I use a white color pencil for that. I look at the reference where the moth has his white stripes and simply fill it in. This moth is by far my favorite. White color pencil doesn't cover up the burnt section completely, so now you can really see which effect it had to lightly burn in the shading on this moth. The slightly darker sections shines through the white application a bit, making the wings look more realistic and elegant. I just love this little one. And then the last one. I also like this moth, but it turned out a little bit more cartoony than the rest. 
It isn't the style I was going for, but I can't complain. And that was it. Which one is your favorite? What would you do with these slices? Let me know. Have a nice day. Until next time.